Coming up on the Cocktail Guru Podcast, our season finale is so jam-packed with celebrities and legends from the cocktail, bar, spirits, and restaurant industries that we had to create three shows instead of two. Join us with some of the hospitality industry's most dynamic movers, shakers, and stirs, including Jackie Schramm, Alan Kennedy, John Meisler, Lisa Laird, Alexander and Charles Gabriel, Daniel Jones and Raymond Edwards, and more. Welcome to day two at Sales of the Cocktail, Dad. Well, thank you, John. And our live well, recording. Welcome to you. What do you well. think? Well, I think we had a great time last night. We did. We, um, we really whooped it up, <laughs> as they say. And I think today we're going to have a whale of an oh interview. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. A whale of an interview. Well, you know uh, why. That's because we have Gray Whale Gin here and Jackie Schramm. Jackie Schramm, the regional spirits brand ambassador for Deutsch family Welcome, wine Jackie. and spirits. Hi guys. Welcome Jackie. This is so exciting. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Happy tales. Yes, happy, happy tales. tales. And of course we're talking about gray whale gin. Yes we are. Yes. Can you tell us uh, briefly about sort of the, the story of gray whale? Because I was introduced to gray whale um, back when it was first launched at WSWA, which is the Wine and Spirits Wholesalers of America Convention. And they won the brand battle, um, which I was actually the MC for this year. Um, but that was a huge momentous occasion for them. And just the story, I think, blew everybody away and just the, the commitment to the environment and all of that. Yeah, absolutely. So our founders, Jan and Marsh Mokhtari, um, they were actually on a camping trip with their two daughters uh, along the California coast. And they stopped at Big Sur uh, at this beautiful place called McWay Falls. So they're standing there on this beautiful scenery, right? Overlooking the ocean. And what do they see but a mama gray whale and her baby calf on their migratory journey. So they start wow. in the Baja Peninsula and they go all the way up to the Arctic. So this sparked a really beautiful conversation of what are we going to do to make the world like a little bit better of a place, right? You know, those conversations when you're on vacation and yeah. the hustle and grind of like your regular day-to-day -day life are kind of out the door and you start thinking about the big picture of mm -hmm. things. So this is where Grey Whale sparked from is how do we bring people together, create a really wonderful product, and at the same time, let's do some really wonderful things and put some good back into the environment. So Grey Whale is all about the migratory path of the gray whale. Each of our botanicals follow along that oh, path. Oh, wow. Yeah, I forgot about that. So when they were at Big Sur, not only did they see the whales, but they must have seen or found juniper. You juniper spot bottles, on. right? Spot man, on. This, this man does his research. <laughs> <laughs> Someone did their research. Uh, so that's, I think, one of the most wonderful things about gray whale and what makes us a, a lot different from the other gins that we see on our back bars and on the, on the shelves in liquor stores is we're actually using juniper from California. Yeah. It's a, it's a much larger berry than its European cousin, and it has a lot of different flavor as well. It's more floral. It's a packed with citrus as mm, well. Yeah, it limes from Temecula. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it is packed with citrus. I, <laughs> I definitely, definitely get that in the nose. Yeah, I and, mean, right on the nose, packed with citrus. Yeah. And then as you, you know, start to, to taste and to develop that flavor, you're going to pick up some of those creamy notes coming from our almonds from the Capay Valley. Mm. That beautiful mouthfeel. Yeah. Right? And I'm getting a slightly piney character, mm -hmm. which must be from the fir tree. From Sonoma. From you got Sonoma. It. And yeah. the juniper. <laughs> well, the juniper, yeah, that's yeah, obvious. Yeah, the two pair yeah. really well yeah, together. Yeah, they do. But, you know, it's blended beautifully. So yes. there, there isn't one yeah, ingredient. Folks, we haven't even tasted it. The juniper, like, because you don't the taste, with, you taste with your nose. Uh, that's that's right. I learned that from you. Yes, you did. <laughs> Well, um, what's the percentage of taste that comes from your nose? Well, it's like 95%. Yeah, it's up to 90%. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. This is lovely. So I'm, I'm going to take a little sip. Yes, please do. Yeah. And then as, you, as you're getting to the end of that, oh, yeah. we missed one of our very special botanicals. No, we didn't. But you're going to see it on Go the right answer. ahead. Yeah. So our, I, bet our six. I bet it's mint. <laughs> Got some minty there as well. But one of my favorites is actually our kombu. 
we are plucking sea kelp yes. right Do you hear the, the trolley? Ocean. That's a trolley. I do. I mean, it's real, it's real New Orleans. <laughs> We're really in New Orleans, guys. You got the trolley going outside. <laughs> Yes, the sea kelp is from Mendocino. Yes. That's right. So the sea mint, kelp is really uh, mint. very interesting. Yeah. Thing. So yeah. you'll have that yeah. little bit of salinity, mm -hmm. some of that umami mm -hmm. flavor that's going to be coming from the, the kombu itself. There's probably no other gin with sea kelp. I'm uh, probably I mean, I'm, safe there in there saying that. There might be a couple. I think there are a couple. I think there are a couple. It's a pretty well, verbatim. Did you do all your research? <laughs> well, only for this brand, <laughs> not for the others. Um, now, uh, Jackie, um, where did you get your, like, what is your journey uh, to where you've been? What is my well, migratory <clears throat> path? <laughs> yeah. What has been your migratory path? Yeah, so I actually started in the industry when I was 14, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, my mother actually used to work at, like, a little mom-and-pop pizza store. And after school, I would go into work with her. There was one of those crazy days where everyone was so busy, the phone was ringing off the hook. And I just picked up the phone, had all the confidence in the world, and I took someone's order, did everything correctly. And honestly, like that was the bug for me. That was the bite that I fell in love with the industry. So eventually I moved to Boston, I did the corporate restaurant world, and there I was immersed with the bar culture. I got to visit all these really awesome Irish pubs and start to open my eyes to what the food and beverage hospitality world could be. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I moved down to Nantucket. We're going to see a little mm. water theme oh, happening yeah. in, in my life and where we've ended up. Yeah, Lived on Nantucket for a whole summer, and I got to work at a beautiful restaurant and learned all about old world wine. When I came back to Boston, I started running cocktail programs, um, and that was the jumping point, honestly, yeah. for me as a bartender in my career, I got to be involved with brand trips. I got to compete in speed rack yeah. uh, and, and really kind of make a name for myself in our small but mighty bar community that's in Boston. About four years ago, uh, we moved down to Houston, where I had a wonderful opportunity to work for Bobby Hubel at Anvil Bar and Refuge. Oh, yeah which if anyone is familiar is one of the most intense training programs to go through as a bartender. Mm -hmm. I went in thinking I knew my stuff and boy was I humbled. <laughs> so your beginnings all came about because of pizza. Because of pizza. Yes, yeah. Which is one of my favorites. That's one of, of all favorites. time. Still one of my favorites as well. <laughs> yes. But I also wanted to mention going back to gray whale, um, the two charitable partners absolutely. that you have, Oceana yes. and 1% for the Planet. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So we are partnered, like you said, with 1% for the Planet and Oceana, which if no one is you know, watching and familiar, is an ocean conservation project. Uh, so a percentage of all of our bottle sales will be donated to them. Uh, but we have done some really phenomenal work with Oceana over the last year. So there is a thing called uh, Drift Gilt Net. And it's these really wide and really long fishing nets uh, that fishermen use for swordfish specifically. But unfortunately, a lot of marine life get entangled in those nets. Yeah. Uh, they get injured and, and sometimes perish. So what both Grey Whale and Oceana did is they worked on a local level to fix legislation to ban these gill nets. And last December, we were able to do that on a federal level as well, wow. which is very impressive and like makes me so yeah. happy and so proud to work for a brand that does that. That's awesome. Right? Um, I, I wish that we can keep talking, 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 <laughs> talking about all this, um, but we have actually one of your colleagues. Um, you with, sure uh, with do. Deutsche Brands coming on with uh, Redemption. So yes. that's coming up next. But Jackie, thank you so very thank much you. for joining us on the podcast. <laughs> Lovely to have you. Thank you so much, guys. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> We have a master blender option as well. We now. do, Mr. Alan Kennedy from thank you for Redemption. Me. Yeah, thank you for having me. Redemption us. Whiskey. Yes. It yeah. is so nice to meet you. And we've been fans of Redemption uh, for a very long time. And uh, it is beautiful liquid. Thank you. And you brought some treats with us. I, with I did, yes. Some things that most people may not get to try. Yes. Uh, or one thing that... One thing that, yeah, it was thing. only for Tales. Only for Tales of the Cocktail. Tell, tell us what you're doing at Tales of the Cocktail here this so year. So we had a, you know, Redemption Whiskey is all about the, bringing back the revival of pre-prohibition love and pre-prohibition experience from whiskey. So we actually created that. 
Um, my team created this full immersive experience with uh, the cops coming in and the whole nine yards. Oh, really? Where yeah. Was, where and when was that? Uh, on Royal the past two days. And, oh, my. And, oh, the, I so saw was that car? Yes, that, that was car. us. Oh, we saw the car and stopped and what a wondered. Nice, what a cool idea. It was fun. Yeah. And then when you got through it yeah. and the cops came and pushed everybody through, they got a nice a nice cocktail, like a sidecar with our, our Egyptian cognac finished bourbon. And then you came in the other room and I had a barrel because I've been a bartender for years been coming to tales for 12 13 i don't even know at this point and they came to me and they're like we want to bring something fun and that is the one thing you don't tell a bartender without like limitations right yeah 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 so i went through my stocks and i found one of our high rye barrels so it's redemption high rise so 36 percent rye um 14 years old um so and i did i did it very simply it, it's something like this doesn't need a lot of manipulation so right I went through cloth filtration mm -hmm. one single pass yeah um, and then it, it, we did about a 20 to 30 minute aeration just to break some of those tannins down and you can get that butteriness to it. That's it. And just let it be what it is. So we had to bring you some. Oh, so, fantastic. But rye is the key. This is a bourbon. It's a bourbon. Right. Yeah. This, yeah. And, and everything we wow. do is a little bit higher. So yeah. like our high rye is 36%. So our high rye bourbon is a lot higher rye than a lot of high rise. But, yeah. uh, and then our base bourbon is actually 21%. So even that one is, is very high. Um, but we just, we love the spiciness. Rye is one of those, is the only grain that like, you get this boldness but at the same time delicacy, you know, those floral notes that come through, it's just, it inspires passion. And when that's I, why I love When it. I order cocktails, mm -hmm. generally that are made with whiskeys, I almost always order something with rye. Nice. With a high rye content. Heavy yeah. rye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I got to train my, uh, my, the person who helped me train and grow as a, as a blender was Dave Pickerel. So yeah, it, it was it was immediately into the yeah. world of, of rye, and then you know his understanding really grew and, and trained me on you know, yeah. understanding those and loving them. So he was great, a, a wonder, wonderful soul. So mm. he, he gave me a private tour oh, nice. of Maker's Mark. Ooh, long long time ago. So many so many fun stories from that man. So mm. He is missed. <laughs> so delicious, oh, wow. deliciously sweet and spicy in the nose. Mm. Mm -hmm. Caramel, we, caramel. Oh my god! We brought up, you know, we, we we did it just enough to bring the vanillas. Yeah, you, know, you still get that spice base. A little bit of like fig jam almost in the yep. background. You tell my pastry chef. That's uh, <laughs> all that, the, all those notes. That you know, again, brings that. that love to it. So but it's so rich and concentrated mm -hmm. in the middle it's of the mouth. It's lovely. What is the uh, proof on this? Uh, one fifteen point one. Uh, when we barreled it off, so it might be yeah. just one three six. If you want to get real nerdy, um, so. We like nerdy. Well, yeah, but with the heat and the humidity on the travel down. So it's probably, it's still yeah. in that 115.1 range. So. Cool. And and um, what is your journey? What is your, migra uh, yeah. what is your migratory journey? What's my migratory journey? I have a weird one. You said pastry uh, chef and So bartender? yeah, I, I, started, I, I started in the pastry world. I grew up like, so even from a very young age, when, when I'm one of three sons and when I was five, my mom got pregnant and her, she wanted something to connect just with me and her. So she taught me how to bake. Aww. Originally oatmeal cookies, that thing, mm -hmm. but it was always my thing. And I ended up going to pastry school. Um, when in pastry school, you don't make a lot of money in the back of the house. So I needed mm -hmm. to make money. So I started in front of the house. Yeah. Um, worked at a fondue restaurant of all places, but they had an amazing wine list. And I got the buck. Um, became a sommelier, a maitre d'. And then, you know, that just led me through different parts of it. And I found spirits. So every paycheck I'd get as a maitre d', I'd go buy another spirit that I'd never had. You know, I didn't, this was before the big movement. You know, like I had Dale's book. Yeah. But like, you know, I didn't know Dale. <laughs> you know, like, right. you know him now, but I had, the, the tales wasn't a thing yet. And so I was going and just buying everything. Uh, and that led me to cocktails. And that led me to doing that and pursuing. Um, and did some ambassadorship work and worked with, with different companies and I met Dave. And um, I found everything I do is based on experience and love and emotion. Mm -hmm. I made a whiskey one time last year. So last year I, I went uh, trick or treating with my daughters. I have a two year old and a, and a six year old. And so like halfway through, you know, the two year olds getting tired. And so mm -hmm. we stop and I bring her, you know, bring her down and we, we're gonna hand out can candy and my wife goes and continues trick-or-treating with the older one. Do you guys remember sugar babies? Oh yeah. Yeah, I did. I certainly did. We still have those in Kentucky. Yeah. And so she opens the first bag that I give her and it's like 10 o'clock at night, but whatever, it's Halloween. And I watch her face, that amazement 
caramel and candy and just mm. I'm getting goosebumps talking about it because mm. it's my daughter. But and I wanted to portray that in a whiskey. And I yeah. went through like 700 barrels of butterscotch and yeah. caramel notes and all this and made a whiskey that portrayed that love and that emotion and that experience. And that's what I feel. When I make whiskeys, I want that. Yeah. And I got that through this experience of wine and cocktail and then Dave. And it was just, it, it's this great, you know, this great combination of this whole world of running through all this that comes together and allows me, you know, to sit with bartenders on, on, you know, Bourbon Street this week and look out and start to come up with ideas of the feeling of what we're all experiencing. Yeah. Because, you know, we can all make whiskeys at 92 points, but it's, yeah. it's what can you do that has soul? I want to be there on that experience. So that's great. I'm, we're all about experience yeah. too. And, you know, hospitality industry and getting back to the core of it all. Yeah. Um, and, and so that really hits home with us too. And everybody out there as well. Um, and we always just keep wanting to talk and talk and talk. Yes, we do. And, and, and drink. Yeah. And, Al, and Alan, you've been an amazing resource for us just in these last few minutes that we've been chatting. And um, I'd like you, I can't forget, you have a couple of other things I here. Do. I just wanna, yes, can we, you do. Can we quickly taste a couple of these? Yeah, things? of course. Okay, okay. And I have a question though. What mm-hmm. part of the world were, were you living in when all of these things? Mostly happened? Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, Nashville. Uh, I lived in Atlanta oh, okay. during some of it, okay. and Nashville, which is where I'm born and raised. Okay. And now I live in wow. Lexington, Kentucky. So, so not too far from Kentucky. Not, not at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we'll start. This is our weeded whiskey. Okay. You know, weeded is a popular thing, and with with you know, we are a rye forward brand. So everybody goes, why Why did you make a weeded whiskey? Right. No, well, when we started looking at weeded and and what happened during pre prohibition and prohibition, you know, wheat doesn't grow it, or <clears> rye doesn't grow everywhere. So what were people doing right. then? So we wanted an expression of that. Uh, we worked with MGB to create it. This is a, their 45% wheat, yeah. their winter wheat. And it's just a beautiful, mm. soft, just unctuous one. Wow, that really is. It is. It's that is soft. It just and yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, next one, we're always about the sunshine, so the, or the experience. So this is rum cash rye. So two oh, different Jamaican yeah. and Trinidad and Tobago right now, a little bit of Barbados and what we pick. Always has that, brings that sunshine to it, you know, that experience. Mm. Finally, this is like my it's like speed tasting. Speed tasting. Speed tasting. My speed tasting. like s- like soaking into the leather couch by a fire. One. This is cognac. Uh, oh, cognac yeah. high, high rye bourbon, oh. and it's just beautiful. I feel like I'm going fast forward, like <laughs> quick. And then we mix them all together. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just kidding. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh and man. When was Redemption first released? Uh, so it was um, released uh, in 2015, I believe. Yeah, that was a while. So ago. Dave Schmier was the original yep. originator. Yep. Of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we know yeah. that we had Dave on the show last year. Yep, and yeah. then uh, we we uh, Deutsch family bought it, and we've we've heralded it since then. And I know it as Redemption Rye. Mm-hmm. That's how it was originally yes. marketed. Yes, so we still we still. Um, <laughs> awesome, Alan. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for joining us. Of course. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. It's a reunion of old friends, and but yes, and old and new because and I don't I don't think you've met Mr. John Meisler before. I have probably so. met John along the way over the oh, years. Some rum joint somewhere. Some <laughs> some joint somewhere, and but, I'm sure John we've and tasted. I, John and I do go go back way quite back. a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember doing a rum class in New York with you when you were head of the USBG. That's right. Oh. And I'm talking, that's um, that 12, would have been 12, two, 13 like, years two, ago. More than it was like 2006, 2007. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> but you've well, been you've been with Don Q for many years, yeah. and you're vice president. That's correct. Of Don Q now, and um, can you tell us a, a little bit about Don Q rum, a wonderfully delicious Puerto Rican rum with sure. several amazing expressions. You know, uh, the, the, the Puerto Rican rums are very special. They're a part of that Spanish colonial style, which is very unique. And usually to that part of the Caribbean, um, they, the, the rums tend to be dry, complex. We talk about our blender more than our distiller, much like a fine cognac. Mm-hmm. You know, some of the choices people can make is to add sugar or not, add additives or not. We typically don't add anything. And the magic comes in the barrel because at Don Q, everything you see is aged. So there's nothing that's not aged. And, and that has a lot to do with how it holds up in a cocktail with the tannins and the texture and the body and the things that happen. So Don has been around since about 1865. The Serayes family moved to Puerto Rico, 1830s or so, started sugar plantations and continued to grow and grow and grow and eventually made their first rum in 1865. Yeah. So, um, you know, the Don Q, of course, named for what is considered well, Don Quixote 
what is considered one of the finest work of Spanish art. Of course. Some people say the original novel, you know, yeah. so um, there's definitely a, a lot of authenticity and, and, and story behind this brand. Yeah, Don Q has, a, it's about 150 years of heritage. Sure. And craftsmanship. Same family, wow. family owned, which is you yeah. know, significant. It, it really is. The, yeah. yeah. And you are from a fine family as well. A little I bit. <laughs> you're, you're an original <laughs> New Orleans. I'm one of one of the originals. My, yes, from um, an old distinguished family. My 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 grandmother's family, the Perrins, um, they came yeah. in about 1730 or so. Oh, so wow. it's been a long time. And you know, oh. uh, on that same side of the family, they were part of uh, the creation of Zatarain Spices. Yes, and, exactly. Uh, Delmonico's restaurant in 1883, I believe it is. Delmonico's here, here. in New Orleans. Yeah, yeah and they exactly. sold it to Emerald exactly. you know, about 25, 30 years ago. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember anymore. But but yeah, yeah right. so but we've been, we've been here. My kids have to take DNA test if they want to marry somebody locally because they're probably <laughs> probably You're cousins. Related. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. right. So so let's. Um, I'd like to try something right now. Sure. And um, I know that you have something new that you brought. Um, should we try that first? Well, you know, we what should. Do you want? I, I think it's fun to try that first. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Um, sure. So this is the new Naranja. Now, Naranja. Now, Orange. That's yes. correct. Yes. Uh, you know. At Don Q, we make flavors that have indigenous uh, roots. fruits or roots yeah. to the to the island. Yeah. You know, we grow citrus on the island. It makes sure. sense. We're not going to have cupcake and birthday right, cake right, <laughs> and right, fruits that right. don't exist. It's right. generally very authentic. Yeah. Mm. Now, of course, I mentioned sugar, but we're going to add sugar to the flavors. That's part of the process. Yeah. But we like to see where the proof is going to balance out, where the flavor comes out the biggest. And, and, and the proof just balances everything. So yeah. nice balance of flavor, alcohol, and sugar. And so application-wise, what is the target application use of this? Well, you know, out of so many, this one tends, uh, we have several flavors, of course, yeah. but this one just has some incredible um, uh, oh, possibilities, right? Yeah. So you can even do a pinkies up. You know, we can do an Aperol spritz. Oh, I like that. With yeah. a little bit of that orange. Sure. We can do orange... Uh, in a frozen pina colada and do a mm. pina dreamsicle, mm. mm -hmm. you know, so it goes all the way from the beach to yeah. the highest end. And, and, and you know, potentially as a substitute for a triple sec in some in classic, a, in a some margarita classic style. Tacos. That's yeah. what I was yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Margarita, exactly. Mm. So you get that big smell there. Mm. 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 Oh, that's so good. Bright, really good. That orange, so crisp, and then you get the tannins. Yeah. That, that's from the wood. It's really so good. even this is a freshly freshly cut orange, the peel, the the mm. meat, mm. the juice. And delicious. this is about ninety days out uh, from when we launched it. That's okay. how new this. Oh, wow. oh really? Yeah, really new. The, the yeah. balance on this is incredible. Yeah. It's just, I mean, you could even just simply do this with a little soda. Yeah. And, 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 and oh yeah. Orange. Diesel. And it's just a. I mean, you don't even need that. You can just there. drink it like we're doing now because it's perfect. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. And there's no real hint of alcohol in there at all in the, in the finish. It's nicely balanced. It's so we, balance. you know, we, we know we have our Cristal, which is our, our clear rum, our right. white rum. We have our gold, our 151. We have our flavor portfolio. Yeah. You know, so much of what we've done, and, and I think in many ways, well, I know in many ways, we were pioneers in the aged rum category. You were talking about you and I, we were tasting this Grand Reserva back then. Yeah. Before it was cool to have aged rums, yeah, right. exactly. Um, yeah. So uh, we're really proud of this, and we, we experimented with several different things. But you know, the Grand Reserva is our flagship. This is you the know? next thing well, that we I, can taste. Yeah, let's, I let's just go straight that. to that. Yeah. You know, th this is one that uh, by itself, you know, it's appealing not just to rum drinkers, but to and people say this, but it's little, cognac drinkers, yeah, Scotch drinkers. We'll have a little residual drinkers. orange, um, that's, but that's okay. It we'll becomes do. an old fashioned. That's perfect. Yeah. Wow, right. we're doing um, a cocktail. <laughs> just a, doing a you cocktail. can even do a cocktail with a sip. So you, you definitely you get the wood, you get the and 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 the the the, the molasses has started to turn old dried fruit you know it's not this young bright citrus what was, that you get. what was that dad you were like because there's a term because john is right on spot on there's a term that i'm going to use it, it, and it's a very it, positive term it, it grew up in the world of cognac yeah, rancio. and it's called rancio that's exactly yeah. right. it, it grew up a little bit it's, it start you it know a young rum tends to be bright bananas citrus fruits right. as this molasses is uh, aged 
so good. It's got the tobacco and the dry fruit, mm -hmm. the dried apricots, the leathers, the yeah, chocolates. Yeah, that's what the rams do. Yeah, yeah, that's the, where the, all the of those characteristics And that's come just in. time. So uh, uh, nine years plus in bourbon barrels, used mm -hmm. whiskey bourbon barrels, and then we blend it with a little bit of the Solera rum that we've had sitting down for quite some time. Oh, so, good, so rich and complex. The um, finish is beautiful. What's in the last minute or so that we have, what's next oh. for Don Q? Is there anything new? Is there- We're, you know, back exciting? to that age things. Yeah, we, yeah, we've yeah. been experimenting quite a bit and it, not experimenting, but you never know what Wood's gonna do, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes. So we've experimented with a, with a plethora of different barrels. We put down Italian sweet vermouth. We put mm -hmm. down Oloroso sherry. We put down now port. Um, we've got uh, California Zin. All these flavors, oh, yeah. and and they were put right. down after they've been aged in the whiskey barrel, so it's double oak, double mm -hmm. cast, as we call it. But time is the only thing that tells how it's going to taste. Right. A sweet vermouth took about three months in that Ita those Italian casks, and it comes out all of a sudden it's a Manhattan. I mean, it was just mm -hmm. that quick. Oh, yeah. Whereas some of the others, time has taken a toll. Right. All right, and depending on the type of wood, you know, the Spanish sherry is different from the French cognac, yeah. which is different from all these. So anyway, so we're really having a lot of fun. These are limited releases. They're not available to everyone. When they're gone, they're gone. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to continue to experiment with things that, you know, and lead the way. That's great. Yeah, you really are leading the way. And we, um, I need to go to Puerto Rico. I need to, I, yeah. Wait, I am going to Puerto Rico in December, actually. <laughs> Um, with my family. So well, good. Should I, should I stop by? You need to. <laughs> Yazelle says, give me a call. She's signing. Give me a call. Okay, thanks. I will. Um, well, this has been amazing, John. It's always great to see you, and I'm so always thankful that you were able to come on the show. My pleasure. John, nice to meet you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much. John, this is momentous because we are amongst royalty. Yes, we yes, are. Yes, this is royalty. We have Lisa Laird with us, who I've been wanting to have on the podcast from the very beginning. And Lisa is known as America's first lady of Apple Jack or Apple Brandy, whichever you want to call it. But I'm calling her America's first lady of spirits because she is that important within our industry. I mean, this company, Laird, just goes back to the very beginning of our history. Well, Lisa is ninth generation. And she's ninth. And her lovely daughter, Laird, is 10th generation. And this is just one of the most exciting interviews we've ever done. Hi, Lisa. So thank Hi. you, Lisa. Hi, well, I love that introduction. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes, well, look, you have federal liquor license number one. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's very important here. Exactly, in, in, internal revenue bonded warehouse number one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of number ones. <laughs> but, but we're also talking about um, the, the light, well, your license goes back to 1780. <laughs> I mean, we're not talking about post-prohibition license. We're talking about a license from 1780. Yeah, well, originally, is, yes. Yeah, originally. And, yep, the original. What, and then, I mean, who wants to talk about post-prohibition mm -hmm. when you can talk about well, 1780? And post-prohibition, post we, we're DSP and J1. Right, right. So, so yeah, it's and, been... Um, Lisa, can you tell us a, a little bit more about the familial heritage and sort of how it came from um, what it is to the modern time? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's um, we've been we pretty much follow the same production standards that we've always had. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's more modern techniques than yeah. we had back um, yeah. uh, back in the 1700s and uh, and 1800s, um, and we found different ways. You know, uh, we use different types of stills. So, you know, we've used pot, pot stills, we've used co column stills. Uh, what we prefer and what we use today is just a pot still with a rectifying column, um, which we find makes the, uh, the cleanest, best apple brandy uh, through the years that we have found. And um, yeah, it's just been the same process, you know, crushing apples, mm -hmm. you know, get, it, it, getting that beautiful, pure apple juice and ferment, fermenting and distilling. and. It's yeah. just a, a, a well, time-honored um, process that we mm -hmm. we still honor this today. This is very important because Jonathan and I are both from New Jersey. Even yes. though he lives yes. in Massachusetts. I'm born and raised in New Jersey. And to think that Applejack was produced by your family since, since 1698 is mind-boggling. Yes. <laughs> and then first commercial production was in 1780, 1780 yes. which is equally mind-boggling. So 
George Washington was probably drinking. Oh, absolutely. Laird's Applejack. Yeah, um, Robert and Richard Laird were Revolutionary War dragoons right. under right. Uh, General George Washington's command at that point in time. Uh, so we did serve, uh, we did supply the troops with Applejack when they were in the area. And uh, my, I guess my, it would be my four greats uncle, um, was George Washington's guide when he was in Monmouth County, New Jersey, where we're yeah. located. Because yeah. as, you know, General Washington traveled during the Revolutionary he War, he did not know the local terrain. Uh, so he'd hire somebody local and it was Moses Laird. And our family actually hosted George Washington in the family home wow. for a meal. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Which is pretty cool. So you know he was drinking quite a bit of apple jack yeah. that night. <laughs> and what is what is this treat that you've brought here today? This is a 10th generation Laird's uh, special bottling. Yes. Well, to honor the 10th generation yes. of the Laird family joining the company, uh, we have my daughter Laird, Emily. There she is. Um, there. And she's here with us today. And also my son, Gerard. Mm -hmm. So we have two. Two out of two, so I did something right. Yeah, yes, <laughs> that's you, you know really probably the continue. biggest pressure uh, oh having gosh, the family yeah. business is uh, getting mm -hmm. that uh, the next generation to come on board. So this is a bottled and bond product, but it is aged an additional year. So this is aged for um, five years, and you can really tell this, there's definitely a difference between our four year, which is very very popular with the bartending community, uh, and this is uh, definitely rounds out the um, the brandy, because that four-year-old has that punch to it, uh, yeah. which the bartenders love. This softens that quite a bit, just I, that I'm, additional year. I'm going to keep um, pouring yes, please so do. that we can mm -hmm. try all of these products. So this is your barrel-aged series. Yeah, this is brand new. We've just introduced our barrel-aged series. And I have an Irish whiskey, which we are sampling today, a bourbon, and a corn whiskey. And we've take, taken those products um, and finished them in our apple brandy barrels. Now, what's really interesting about the Irish whiskey is I had to ship my barrels to Ireland. Uh, um, and the finishing aging was done in Ireland in order to retain Irish whiskey on the label. Yeah. Now, could I be getting some apple from Oh, absolutely. I'm getting it. That's because it's aged I, in well, apple. Well, I understand yeah. this, but I just want to make sure that I'm Have you been listening? Correctly. Definitely yes, coming I have, through. But it really does come through. It does, Much yes. more so than I would expect. It, it, especially with the Irish whiskey yeah. and then our corn because whiskey. it's a lighter whiskey. Um, bourbon, you know, not so much, but, right. you know, bourbon is bourbon and everybody loves bourbon, but you, you do get the apple essence. Thank you. In that product as well, but the Irish whiskey, the the apple really shines and, through. And in the last minute or two that we have, I know it goes by so fast. I know it so does. We have it much does. more. This, to this talk is your about. bottled uh, old fashioned. Ooh. Yes, or RTD, high proof. It's eighty proof, um, old fashioned, and it is our. We use our three year apple brandy, mm. um, Angostura bitters, some orange bitters, oh. and sugar. Oh, so, so it's That's very great. simple recipe and I basically brought my cocktail that I enjoy at home, put it down and uh, said, this is what we need to replicate. <laughs> but this is what I really wanted to talk about. I understand at one stage of your life, you were interested in becoming a veterinarian. You got into the family business, obviously. You did your research. Was that <laughs> yes, large, uh, large animal? Yes, yes, equine, e equine yes, absolutely. But coming, bringing Laird's into the 21st century, you were greatly influenced by, and I understand what the dilemmas were, what the situation was with spirits before the, the young cocktail generation came mm -hmm. about. Yes. But I know that you were, you went to places like Pegu Club and Little Branch mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, possibly met with Sasha Petrosky. I don't know if yes. you met him. Yes, I, I absolutely. had the opportunity to do that. And you became aware of the cocktail culture in full force, and you were able to integrate Laird's into the new cocktail culture. But also Gary Regan and yes, getting, so. getting in with his cocktails in the country classes. That's where I was first introduced. Really? And that was, was, two, there? was yeah. 2001. Yeah, well, I took his Jonathan first. Jonathan and I took class together, yeah. his first and, class. Yeah, you may really? have been involved since almost yeah. the beginning of that. Yes, I was. Yeah, you yeah. were one of I, the original sponsors. And then you and I coordinated because I started working for Gary Mm -hmm. pitching sponsors for um, his t uh, cocktails in the country. And yeah. because of all that, Laird's has become an integral part of cocktail culture. Today. 
it puts the bartending community, yeah. their love and yeah. appreciation for the product um, has really grown our product globally, not only in the United States, right. but we now export to various markets because of the bartending community. I mean, yeah. it was exported in suitcases. <laughs> yeah. right. I mean, right. it was all over the world because um, when somebody was coming to the States, they would always say, yeah. bring home, bring me up some of the bottled and bond. I need bottled and bond. I can't get it here. Uh, and I would find it all over the world. But now, you know, I'm exporting to 18 different markets, and wow. that is because of the bartenders. Yes. Um, it's just, and, and I are, have such an appreciation. Yeah, I mean, for you're basically one of us. You're one of us. You know, you're one. <laughs> well, you, thank you. You're fully, you're like, no, I mean, you're sure. fully, as a brand owner, and you're fully immersed in yeah. the industry. And that's, mm-hmm. that's rare. You know, you're not looking at it from the 30,000 foot level. But you are because of the brand power, but you're mm-hmm. down on the ground. Um, exactly. And I love it. And it's 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 interesting, especially going back home and letting everybody know what's going out in the market. And one of the reasons we ran out of our bottle of bond, if you remember, we took it off the label for four years. Yeah. That's because my father, Larry, did not listen to me. I kept telling him, we need to produce more brandy. We need to produce more brandy. He didn't. And then finally, one day he goes, we need to produce more brandy. I'm like, oh, <laughs> finally. OK. <laughs> and we had to take Bottle and Bond off our label for four years because we could not guarantee yeah. it was 100 percent four year old. Wow. Well, mm-hmm. um, the products, what you brought here today is beautiful and amazing. And we're so glad that we were able to sit down with you here at Tales of the Cocktail. So thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. It was, it was really exciting to see you. And uh, we'll have to do this again. It's been an honor. Cheers. Thank you. John, yes. we're lucky yes, once Dad. again. Yeah, we had, yeah. we had uh, Lisa Laird, American Apple Brandy royalty with us, and now we have another piece of royalty here with us today, a man who needs no introduction, Alexandre Gabriel Pleasure to be Ferrand, here. which Pleasure. is incredible, with his son, Charles. We're keeping it in the well. family. We are oh, keeping his great because family. Father, son, very father, happy to son. Be here. Oh my gosh, guys! Charles, very nice to meet you. Great meeting you too. Um, and and when you think about cognac, I think about Ferrand. When I think about dry curacao, I think about Ferrand. And, and rum, incredible. of course, plantation and, and, rum. And all the great those are my Citadel favorite. gin. I just can't get enough of too. plantation rum. I mean, your yeah. your products, Alexandre, really hit home for so many bartenders, uh, consumers too, and you're at all of the amazing events. You're here at Tales of the Cocktail. Um, can you give us a little bit of background on Ferrand and, and the brands themselves? Well, uh, as you know, I've been doing this for 34 years. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, you know, we're a family business. It's true. We saw Lisa and her daughter. And, and I always say there's two things that I think is wonderful in our business is the sense of community and family. So when you see family businesses, it hits home and we love it. It's like the two of you, father and son. Mm. And then also farming, you know, I think behind, uh, you know, every great spirits and even not so great spirits, there is, there should be somebody farming something, right? And that's right. very true. We have the late harvest yuzu. It's a very specific, you know, yuzu harvested in Morocco from Lagrumiste. And uh, Lagrumiste is a, is a farm that actually uh, 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 grows citrus for the, the star sh- uh, chefs in France. Mm-hmm. An incredible uh, farm and guy and they, they, we wanted to do a yuzu curacao, uh, you know, which would complement the orange. So that's what we did. It's a limited edition. Yeah. And see, we, we already drank too much. That's what <laughs> I was, uh, dropping the glasses. I can't. Well, I've never tasted this one before. I've tasted the traditional dry curacao, but um, not the yuzu. And this is just mouthful. I've been reading about it and wanting to taste it. For, and this is brand new, while. launched. Yes. So we did one of us last year. Yeah, because right. we were learning about yuzu. You see, because yuzu, mm-hmm. I have learned that if you let it sit on the tree longer, because they are harvested early to get this very yuzu is you know taste yep. of the juice. Now, if you let it sit on the tree, I've been told by the farmers over there in Morocco, then the flavor migrates progressively to the skin. You know, remember we distill the skin and some of the fruit to have that yeah. comfort and beautiful, nice, very defined taste. And so that's the curacao yuzu. So we made one batch. That's why we call it late harvest. You know, yeah. when you let it sit, it gets a little sweeter and more. Absolutely. And then um, we did one batch and everybody loved it. They were like, we need more of this. And I'm like, okay, we'll do a second batch. So it's going to be like a late harvest vintage yuzu. We're going to do one every year. 
with the harvest that we get from this very special farm. And the harvest doesn't take place until February. Right? Alors, you're right, That's exactly. Incredible. Alors, usually the, the yeah. harvest of yuzu is more like October, November, right. but we wait a few months to have the yuzu fully ripe for using for distillation. That was a great finding. You know, there's always a secret that a distiller has. I'm gonna give you one. If you make a liqueur from pear, you use a little bit of quince, for example. It's just a little secret. Yeah. Cassis, you use, you use the, the bourgeon uh, of the flower. Here, the idea is to do it at a, a later stage. Mm. You like it? It's delicious. And it. 40% ABV. So, mm -hmm. you know, cocktail ingredient stands up to all the other base spirits. That, and you that can makes use a it. great margarita. Mmm. Wow, I'm trying to margarita. Yeah, yuzu um, margarita. So it's yuzu, yuzu late harvest dry curacao. Exactly. Yeah. Charles, um, growing up in the business like I did, um, were you? Was your dad giving you all these types of things to taste even at a young age? And were, yeah, and was he giving you tasting notes? And you were like, "What the hell is this guy talking about? I have no <laughs> idea what's going on here." Because that's well, how it was in my house. I oh forced, yeah, forced no. him. To taste. Yeah. I started maybe a little bit too early. Like uh, I just remember probably my first taste of cognac. I might have been six tasting it with my pinky. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, he started when he was uh, three hours old. Ah, okay, straight, <laughs> straight out of the bottle. Champagne. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they woke you up. <laughs> and um, do you have a spirits background or a bar background or business background? Yeah, so um, I, I have a decent amount of background. I kind of basically grew up in, in the industry following yeah. my dad around, going to vis uh, d distilleries. When we were on vacation, we'd constantly be going to distilleries either in Mexico or in Ireland. Yeah. Um, and after that, I I uh, worked for a distributor in uh, in Denmark for fine wine and oh. spirits, and then worked at Teeling Whiskey Distillery as a distiller oh, there for a few wow. months. Oh, cool. Uh, for free. Yeah. Because I just wanted to learn how Great. to make their secret recipe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And now, uh, and I kind of just like if there's any events or anything, I'll tend to follow along, help out when I have yeah. a vac any time on vacation. So you know, the distiller's family business, we swap each other's children for cheap labor, you know, that's why. <laughs> oh, is that what happened? Of course. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and you grew up in France, Charles, right? Yes. And you, you probably speak impeccable French and you speak impeccable English too. And I'm very jealous because I, I'm half French, but I grew up here and my French is rough, you know, around the edges. It's pretty fluent but it's rough so i'm i'm jealous now i've been i've been in the u.s for more or less five years now it's mm -hmm. starting to get rough now too i'm starting to get the french uh, is starting yeah. yeah okay i'm out of practice that makes me feel a little <laughs> but you're living here now yes and where yes. in chicago oh great yes fantastic yeah. and what do you, um alexander what are you guys doing here at tales so tales is wonderful to us it's like a family reunion we get to see everything i have a confidence to make you know you saw lisa <laughs> yeah. yesterday there was a tribute to rocky and yeah god bless rocky, rocky yeah. and uh and we were you know uh, pickup trucks outside of a nice bar and they put some li lining with plastic and Excuse ice me, water I saw, I saw a social media photo where you were dipping <laughs> your feet into yeah. a tub of water in the yeah. back of a pickup truck. I keep telling people we are a family of French rednecks. They don't believe <laughs> <it>. <laughs> that's what we are, you know? And so we were there and Lisa was there yeah. and we actually agreed on a barrel swap, like oh. in the back of a pickup Ooh, truck nice. with other guys nice. that were filled up of ice water that's hilarious. and, you know, keeping cool. And that's, that's how family <laughs> businesses, we think they do great products. And, you know, we did Stiggins, you know, the yeah. pineapple rum barrels right. are great. And so we're thinking about, you know, doing a double aging for her delicious products. And we're going to use some of her barrels. And we shook hand on it uh, last night. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. So like in, in, in a lot of financial deals, the deals are made like on the golf course. Yes. But in our industry, the deals are made in the back of a pickup truck. Exactly. Full of ice water <laughs> in Louisiana. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh and drinking a good cocktail. That's, we think that's normal. That's, so wow. that's our tales of cocktails. And of course, a lot of learning, a lot of yeah. sharing. Now what it's about, you know, seeing a lot of friends. I love the bar world, such a beautiful community. Yeah. And so that's what we've been doing all month, all week. <laughs> and and you're, you guys are, um, are constantly innovating. And I wouldn't be surprised if you have something else up your sleeve. I don't know if there's anything that you can share or you could just let us know, hey, you know, yeah, we're, we're working on something that you think 
There's okay. always, we create 10 new products every month. So I have, I always oh, work out wait, opens. You create 10 new products every month? Yes, but we don't launch 10 new products well, right, every, right. every, you know, I have always cargo pants okay. when he's I work. Pulling, so he's pulling stuff I have out bottles of his in my pants. pockets. That's a friend of mine, you know, Keto. They do an incredible rye whiskey in the country of rye Finland, which is malted, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, malted, uh, uh, actually rye strange yes. and then they use the plantation barrels so they gave me the samples wow. I was got in my pockets and and uh, so we researched a lot of things and and, and as you know with, with Citadel we do new expression every year yep. also plantation a little breaking news oh. we're gonna have soon a, a plantation Paraguay where this is Caña Paraguaya it's a special oh. where they actually warm the juice create almost like the skimmings of the 19th century people don't think they exist anymore and age in the wood called incienso Vat aging, which is very traditional oh, wow. to rum. So that's oh, going to be one of the plant, plantation new kit, uh, uh, you know, coming soon. That sounds amazing. Well, um, we're so thankful that you've been able to come here, Alexandra and Charles. All the best. It's always so great to see you at every event. We've seen each other quite a, that's quite a few true. times now yeah. that oh, events yeah. are coming yeah. back, BCB Tales. Um, but cheers to you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank cheers. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I am so pleased to see my good friend, Daniel Jones, uh, with Angostura Rum. And he is global brand ambassador, uh, travels the globe, uh, working with Angostura. Raymond. Raymond is, uh, oh, Raymond, why don't you let us know what exactly you are now? I know uh, chief mixologist, chief brand educator. <laughs> well, uh, chief brand educator. You know, my, my passion started off uh, in the yeah. hospitality industry, so bartending is very close to my heart. But I channel or pretty much uh, try to my best at the helm to streamline the communication for all our global BAs. That's amazing. And how many um, BAs are there around the globe? Uh, uh, approximately six, six of yeah. them yeah, yeah. that we work very, very closely with. Six key BAs. But Daniel, uh, who is based in, in Paris, does a lot oh, that's of... That's right, you're based in pa yeah. Have you always been based in Paris? No, I, no. I moved just six years ago. What's Paris? How's Paris going for you, bud? <laughs> oh, man, what a city. Uh, yeah, but you know, I'll tell you, man, our roots are embedded on the island of Trinidad and Tobago. So for Raymond and I, yeah. we, you know, he lived on the, on the what? No, not, north not, side. not eastern end, yeah. Yeah, oh. and I lived on the deep south side. Mm -hmm. uh, we both eventually got into the city side. But because of that culture that we brought up in, yeah. we have this richness of our heritage. So to be honest with you, man, I feel like I'm affecting or influencing Paris more than it's influencing me. Wow. So as much as there is, there are 500 cheeses, I love my spicy food, man. <laughs> what, what, are, what are your favorite French cheeses that pair with Angostura? Oh, Angostura is so good with cheeses too, man. I have to admit. Oh my gosh. But before I say this, I have to pour a drink of rum because it's, Please. it's such a great pleasure to see you. And you know it, man, this is an, this is a pleasure for us oh. because I want to say something like when we drink rum, it's cultural for us. I always tell yeah. people you're supposed to experience a bit of the island. Yeah. Now, remember, if you go to Jamaica, you go to Barbados, you have about five distilleries to visit. If you come to the island of Trinidad, there's only one baby. Yeah. <laughs> how's, how's the yeah. And I did want to say that everybody out there, especially in our world of cocktails and spirits knows Angostura bitters, but not everybody is familiar with Man. Angostura rum, which is a fantastic line of rum. So we are. Yeah, I think I think I think that adds uh, to the whole discovery category uh, that Angostura falls in. You know, it's where our journey began in 1824. Yeah, yeah. bitters. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So Dr. Now, Seagert. Dr. Seagert, Dr. U.S. Seagert. I can go through the characteristics with you guys, but yeah. you guys are connoisseurs, I know this. So instead of that, I'm going to bring a little bit of the philosophy that Raymond and I grew up in. Okay. When we drink rum on the island, we become more than friends, we become family. Mm. Yeah. Some people drink too much and they do become family. <laughs> yeah. It's just right. It's just right. It, it happens, happens <laughs> right? And the philosophy is this. When you have good rum, good friends, you always make great memories. Absolutely. Mm. Jeff, uh, guys, it's a pleasure. Uh, that is just beautiful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for being here. Well. Yeah. Well. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> um, Daniel has a great laugh. I mean, you're just like, you light up a room with that laugh. Right? Thank you, brother. Thank you. Mm. Um, oh, man. Yeah. Wow. It's, that's it's good. Fresh, it's delicious, right? Fresh cut sugar cane. Oh, man. Listen, man. This is, so this is molasses based, but this is the seven. I mean, you know the seven man. It's no, it's it's it's, it's for me. It's, it really speaks through to our to our distillation, to our master distiller and his ability 
to really capture the heart and soul of the distillate. Yeah. What we do here is that we take heavy and light rums from the still. This is then given to our master blenders who are all female. We have an all-female really? uh, blending team. Yeah. Wow. And you know, it's, it's, it's not to be sexist or biased in any way, guys. Yeah. It's just the reality of growing up on the island. You know, growing up, I know Haji, we say Haji. Uh, for the Hindus, Trinidad is very, very diverse. Um, grandma, my mom, we saw these ladies in the kitchen. What my dad and granddad were doing, they were on the farm, gathering the food. Yeah. So, inspect of flavor, understanding flavor and balance. You know, from a historical standpoint, in Trinidad and Tobago, the women always had that pioneering act yeah. of being able to cook and really understanding flavor. It's the same thing at the distillery. You know, if it's not broken, why try to fix it? Mm. Yeah. So this has this has worked that for the House of Angustria for many, many years. Mm. It's beautiful. And um, you brought another uh, yes. tree. Oh, oh yes. Oh. The 1919. Angus year 1919. Uh, yeah, in the, in the earlier years, in the earlier years, pretty much, uh, this was uh, an original Fernandez. And I say Fernandez because uh, Seagate and Sons acquired Fernandez, really wow. bringing together two powerhouses, mm -hmm. masters of bitters and the master of rum, to form the House of Angus Now, in 1932, and then you know the story, you know, Manuel Fernandez, he bought a government bond that was totally engulfed in fire. Now, he's very strategic. It was a business meeting. Mm -hmm. When he opened the doors and realized what was in this warehouse, he canceled the meeting, sent the guys home. And what he did was, went back, opened it up, realized it was stuck all the way to the ceiling with cask. On the cask head had the number 1919. This was in 1932, 13 years later. Yeah. When he took down that cask, this is what he tasted. So the House of Angostura, to commemorate that liquid, that Mr. Fernandez found in those cars in those earlier years, we give the world Angostura 1919. Oh my gosh. So Angostura has reproduced the style. Yeah. Absolutely. Of Even though there's family that they members found, who were alive to get involved, to get... Yeah. Now, I'll tell you this. We get a bit sentimental sometimes. So I want you to picture this. You char a barrel on the inside. Mm -hmm. You know that the wood is going to be stimulated. Imagine if the wood has been exposed to heat on the outside. There's something magical about this. Yeah. So I think this is what really inspired Mr. Fernandez mm -hmm. and he fell in love with this blend. And for us, recreating it was paying homage and celebrating a blend that is so unique. And this is why you can taste a hundred rums, but when you taste 1919, you're like, oh boy, that is Angus It's, special. Yeah, it's very special. special. Yeah. Concentrated, <laughs> and, and rich, and yes, absolutely cheers. complex. Cheers, guys. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Cheers, cheers. guys. Cheers. Mm. Mm. And you guys brought this for us. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell, you know, we have industry people who watch and listen, but we also have non-industry people who, yeah. who may not necessarily know the, the, you know, the significance of swizzles. It's, it's not what you think. <laughs> Can you tell the folks at home? Yeah, oh, man. This, well, you know, some, 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 uh, some people call it chicken feet. They look like, yes. they look like chicken feet. So yeah. You know, but uh, the art of swizzling is, is, is indigenous to the Caribbean region, you know. Yeah. It, it originated in the, in the Caribbean region. Absolutely. And the reality is a lot of the, the workers on these estates in the earlier years didn't have the, they weren't as fortunate as their, uh, their masters to acquire silvery and cutlery yeah. to prepare their food. So they will go to the back of the plantation and they will cut the branch of a sassafras or allspice mm -hmm. tree yeah. in preparation of food. Yeah. Now Trinidad and Tobago is the most diverse islands in the Caribbean. We are the most Southern islands. And when I say sudden in, in that, you know, here in New Orleans, we get, uh, we get hurricanes. In my 40 years, I've never experienced a hurricane. Yes. Um, in Trinidad, knock on wood. Wow. <laughs> yeah, um, but, you know, it, it, it really speaks to the diversity of the island. Now, on the East Indian end of Trinidad, we have a dish called dal. And to make dal, you need a dal gutni. And a dal gutni is a Swiss thing from the island as well. We take dal. We boil it, we reduce it in local spices, and then we swizzle it to make a paste. Mm -hmm. But on the African end, we have kalaloo. Mm -hmm. And kalaloo is dashing leaves or spinach reduced in coconut milk mm -hmm. and local spices like shadowbani, <laughs> pimento. It's a Sunday special. Mm -hmm. It's a must-have on oh a Sunday. Goodness. Every Sunday, we make crabs and kalaloo. Is this our invitation? Uh, to that for I don't know. Jeff has been there on the island. I have been. Yes, but I was going to ask, why didn't I have all these dishes there? 
you know, I was at Angostura, I was at the distillery, but uh, during my, it was only a quick, like two day stay. I didn't get to have these great specialties, but the food was wonderful nonetheless. Because you can, you can come back. What really, we need to give the to local tour, brother. Thank you, man. thank you. But what it really speaks to is, is the mere fact that it, it really indicates to us where, you know, where swizzling really originated. It didn't originate in the bar as we use it for our national cocktail, yeah. the Queen's yeah. Park Swizzle. Right. It started off in the kitchen right. and made its way in the bar as most bartenders would have plied their trade and started their, their journey, taking ideas and concepts from the kitchen and bringing it into the bar. And that is one of my favorite cocktails of all time. Oh, man. Queen's Park Swizzle. Oh, man. Well, let me tell you, what, what, what amazes me about the Queen's Park Swizzle is this. Firstly, the hotel was one of the, was one of the first to have electricity. All right, so Queen's which Park meant Hotel. that you had all these dignitaries, movie stars coming to it. Mm -hmm. It overlooked the largest roundabout, which is still today the largest roundabout in the, <laughs> the world. Queen's Park Savannah. Yeah, the Queen's Park Savannah, right? Now, one of those famous people that went to this hotel in the 1930s was Trader Vic. Ah, imagine that. Yeah, now, he six. came intentionally yeah. not because yeah. the women were right. beautiful and the rum was great. He came because of this cocktail. Yeah. He was following yeah. Dunn. Right, that yeah. did not reveal his secrets. Right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so he came to the island to try this famous cocktail. Now there wasn't Instagram, there wasn't TikTok, but word went around <laughs> that this cocktail, the Queen Spark Swizzle, was a winner. Yeah. And when he came, I always think about this man. He declared in his book Trade of a Food and Drink that the Queen Spark Swizzle being the most delightful form of honesty oh given to me. Mm. Yeah. Right. Now imagine right. if you could describe your cocktails with your own voice. Yeah. Like, Three of these will get you so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, it's amazing. We, we could keep talking talking about all of this, and I want to, but we don't have any more time. I got you, man. Sorry, Guys, you, man. this has been amazing. Well, so thank great. You so much thankful for, for you to well. come here. Pleasure, and pleasure. Angus Duro got rums. Yeah. yeah thank we you. have so much yeah. more to talk about. <laughs> Definitely. Angus Angus Dura Dura Thanks, rums, Daniel and Raymond. Angus Duro bitters and Yeah, I think, I think this should be considered kind of just a, you know, a, a trailer. That does it for today's show. If you enjoy what we do, please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. You can also support the show with a small monthly donation to help sustain future episodes. Just click on the donate button at the top of our website and choose your donation amount. To learn more about our guests, visit www.thecocktailgurupodcast.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok. The Cocktail Guru Podcast is produced by First Real Entertainment and distributed by Eats Drinks TV, a service of the Center for Culinary Culture, home of the Cocktail Collection, and is available via Anchor, Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon, and wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 